Solstice is terrible this year, as you now have to grind a bunch of bounties to get currency to unlock the armor, farm silver leaves who can even purchase those bounties, and are yet again forced to play Bonfire Bash for the upteenth time. Bungie just made this event even more grindy and anti-player. At a glance, that's what players thought day one, but as the week progressed and players played the event, sentiments changed. People actually like the event and its updates. I'm not saying it's perfect, but Bungie did make changes, some good and some bad. You can now earn double perk weapons, high stat armor drops frequently, you don't have to play Bonfire Bash to get event loot except for a couple of times to progress the Solstice quest, and you can kind of play whatever you want and not really worry about farming for silver leaves. This video is going to be a discussion on Solstice and seasonal events in general. The first part will be talking about the last two Solstice events and how they have changed, for better or for worse, using objective information and personal experience. I'm not trying to convince you your negative opinion is wrong, rather just show you how things have evolved. The second section will be talking about all events and my thoughts and feedback to Bungie. The goal is to try to diagnose the community problem with these events, show what they offer, and give ways to improve them. Let's start with Solstice's Silver Leaves. To express that this currency economy has gotten a lot more player friendly, we'll look at uses and drop rates. This year, you need Silver Leaves to purchase Forged Bounties, which are required to unlock the event's armor, the White Glows, and the sources of high stat armor and event weapons. The cost of these bounties are 1, 2, or 5 Silver Leaves, with the ability to refresh these bounties costing 5. If you only care about unlocking the base armor set, both for looks and to unlock the ability to farm high stat armor and double perk weapons, you need 50 to 67 silver leaves if you are efficiently completing the bounties by only doing 35 rare or 10 legendary ones and didn't account for bounty refreshes. What if I told you that Ava gives you that many leaves for free? Once you unlock one armor piece, Ava will give you a pile of 50 leaves so that you can unlock the rest of the armor and their glows. While you'll still need leaves to get up to that point, it lessens the grind. That being said, this doesn't account for potentially needing to refresh forge bounties if you're trying to be efficient and focus on the easier, more rewarding ones. I understand why the cost exists and is this high, encouraging you to play more or try different bounties instead of re-rolling to get the same easy ones. A good compromise would see this cost lower to 3 leaves if the system is what Bungie wants moving forward, which I think is worth considering. Now, that sounds like a lot of leaves and bounties to complete, but when you realize you can complete 5 in the matter of 10 to 15 minutes, that only amounts to a couple of hours of grinding. Depending on the activity and a little luck, you don't have to farm leaves ahead of time. Doing the activity to complete the bounties will reward enough leaves to buy more bounties. Most efficient farms are easy dungeon and raid encounters for hardcore players, or Altars of Sorrow on the Moon for any player. If you care about overall loot and don't mind being less efficient, you could still grind core playlist activities or even Bonfire Bash. When we looked at 2023's version of Solstice, to unlock high stat armor farming you were required to complete all of the event challenges. This was so you could earn Kindling, which was the upgrade material to unlock high stat armor focusing. Those event challenges, while not difficult, were time consuming and dictated what you would play, instead of giving you the freedom to do whatever. If you were being optimal, it would take you over 5 hours. For this year's solstice, completion of the challenges was only for the title and some rewards like a ship and materials. Not only is this optional, but it takes less time to complete, only 3-4 to four hours of playing optimally. To look at the time investment for high stud armor farming, which is the main draw and feature of solstice, we need to look at silver leaves and the order of objectives. This chart shows the drop rates for various activities for both 2024's version of Solstice and 2023's. As you see, drop rates are fairly similar with a few notable exceptions. This year, you can no longer get leaves from normal lost sectors. This was one of the most efficient solo player grinds last year, albeit a bit boring and unrewarding. For raids and dungeons, we saw a near doubling of the leaves this year, which is great for endgame teams. Finally, we get to Bonfire Bash, where this year you actually earn silver leaves from it. So not only could you play this activity to get event weapons, you could also do it to get high set armor, double perk weapons, and to progress your armor quests. 2023's version required you to play Bonfire Bash for armor farming, and you needed to do so with a lot of silver leaves. Let's take a look at the time it takes to unlock and then get one piece of high stat armor. 2023's version required all the event challenges, so 5 hours. 2024's required forge bounties and armor alloy, which would take 2-3 to three hours. 
So right there, 2024 Solstice is faster to unlock armor farming. That being said, last year's Solstice unlocked armor farming for all characters because kindling and event challenges are tracked account wide. This year it is per class. But it's kind of a wash. This ends up being a benefit for solo players as it's quicker or a similar amount of time for three character players compared to 2023's Solstice. For armor farming, this year you'd complete forge bounties after you unlock the base set. For guaranteed drops, you'd complete legendary gold bounties, which can be completed in 10 to 20 minutes depending on the endgame activity. For a more accessible farm, you'd complete rare green bounties. Similar time to complete, but the drop chance is common, which is around that 50% area. So in that amount of time, you can get 1 to 5 high stat armor drops since you can complete multiple bounties at once. And since you're completing activities that reward silver leaves, you'll get enough to buy a couple more bounties to repeat the process. For 2023's version, you need 25 silver leaves to then turn into 120 silver ash by playing Bonfire Bash. Not only do you have to play a specific activity, but you have to play it in a certain way. You needed to have Solstice armor equipped, and the number of leaves that turned into ash was based on the number of igniters deposited in a run. So if your team wasn't very good, you could possibly not reach the max 100 ash per run. And since you need 120 ash, that means you need two runs of Bonfire Bash minimum. To put a time on it, that's 25 minutes if you were abusing the first mission Lightfall Cheese, that was available for both events, or upwards of an hour if you were playing more legitimate activities. 20 minutes for 5 pieces, or over an hour for just one. You can see the difference. However, that doesn't paint the full picture, and this is where I address the main gripe with this year's Solstice, the quality of the high stat armor. The old Solstice system allowed you to focus stats with your Silver Ash, a minimum 20 in a stat of your choosing. You could also be wearing a Ghost Armor mod that guaranteed a minimum of 10 in another stat. Use both these features on one section of an armor piece, so both in the top half or both in the bottom half, and you can guarantee the third stat in that section to be low, around 2. This cut out a lot of RNG, is one of the best armor farms, and is the closest we'll ever get to armor crafting. For this year's Solstice, the system was removed. Now, Forge Bounties reward generic high stat armor, meaning it'll be between 58 and 68 stats, you can only control one stat by using Ghost Armor mods, and they seem to have that spiky nature like other endgame sources. You're at the mercy of RNG, but you get like 5 to 10 times the drops. It's the sniper versus shotgun approach to loot. Which is better depends on the player. While I do find the old approach gave superior armor, it took a long time to reach that payoff. This year, I'm more rapidly earning armor, and in the grand scheme of things, I've gathered quite a good haul that is on par to what I kept from last year's Solstice. I do believe there's a happy medium to be had, it just comes down to Bungie. Going back to other loot, you have events weapons. Last year, you could only get them from Bonfire Bash, and if I'm being honest, all their perk pools were trash. This year, you could earn them from Bonfire Bash and Forge Bounties. Since Forge Bounties could be completed anywhere, that gave you the freedom to play what you wanted. Additionally, the Forge Bounties rewarded double perk events weapons, while the previous Solstice didn't have that feature. So not only were you getting more weapons this year, you're increasing the odds of your god rolls by getting double perk options. Plus, all of the weapons have great perk pools this year for all types of players. Let's round things out with other quick changes, good and bad. Instead of requiring you to wear a full set of Solstice armor in all activities to get necessary currencies and loot, now you just have an item in your quest menu that does it for you. Bonfire Bash loot has two separate loot pools and drop occurrences. What this means is that unlocking armor doesn't water down your loot pool. You'll get the same number of weapons before and after unlocking armor. It's just you'll get armor in addition to your weapons, so a doubling of overall loot. Unfortunately, that armor is useless as they aren't high stat, so they're only useful for dismantle materials. In prior solstices, armor and weapons were in the same loot pool, so the only avenue to farm event weapons could in fact not reward you with event weapons. Lastly, and probably the worst change, is that the base solstice armor set requires event participation and the upgrade process. Last year, Ava just gave you the full set. But again, this comes down to the approach of the event. This year pushes you to unlock armor so you could farm high stat and double perk weapons. Last year, you required that armor so you could get silver leaves and ash to get loot and high stat armor. 
Hopefully you've seen that this year's Solstice is actually quite good, and that Bungie has iterated on the event to make it more rewarding and player friendly. If we then look back to other seasonal events, we can also see Bungie trying to iterate on them. The Dawning got updated with double perk weapons and weapon focusing, Guardian Games got a special PvP event playlist, allowed event weapons to drop from any Guardian Games playlist, and added the Skimmer, a new traversal vehicle. Festival of the Lost got events weapon focusing and exotic armor focusing, with that exotic focusing not requiring exotic engrams or the exotic to be unlocked in collections. So newer or returning players, you can more quickly and easily expand your arsenal. All of these have helped push these events into the current era of D2, but they still have some problems and identity issues. So let me give focused feedback and ideas for all of these events. First thing, I would love Bunchy to give a mission statement on all of these events. This is something we've gotten a few times over the course of Destiny where they've outlined their core principles and philosophies for the game. For specifically events, what are they trying to achieve? Something different to break up the course of a season? An opportunity to get unique loot or play catch up for casual players? A different avenue for fun? I'm just curious what they want to achieve and how they go about designing things. For the meat of these events, the general community sentiment is that they want to play something fun, play something new, not be forced to play something specific to get some loot, and feel like their time was respected. As a whole, Bungie has been slowly tackling this criteria. It's just how much they need to do depends on the player. While I don't mind playing Bonfire Bash in the same area in a similar way year over year, others want something drastically new. And I know that is a tall ask because it is a free to play event that only is here for three weeks out of the year. So my second bit of feedback is to tweak the yearly event activity. The first thing people look at is the event's activity, if there is one, and its gameplay loop. That's Bonfire Bash, Haunted Lost Sectors, or Guardian Games playlists. Completely new activities and areas each year is asking too much, but I would like to see the current ones offered altered. For example, Bonfire Bash could stay in the EAZ, but instead make it nighttime or be affected by different weather events or decorations. On a mechanical level, maybe change how we get igniters. While people are nostalgic for the old chess system of running around the map, I think the current iteration is good. 10 minute commitment, loot is based off your efforts and not if you can find the chests. For Haunted Lost Sectors, change them up each year for more variety. People want the Infinite Force back, but that's recreating a whole activity just for this event. Haunted Lost Sectors are based on the Lost Sectors we already have in the game to make it easier to develop for. By having different ones every year, people will react less negatively, as currently they just see it as a lazy copy and paste, even though other parts of the event, like the loot system, do get meaningful changes. As for the dawning, it really doesn't have an activity, just snowballs in certain places that don't really change how you play except for getting bounties done. Maybe investigate into snowball or frozen themed playlists? Stasis is now free to play, so if you want to relive the terror of Beyond Light, maybe a stasis only PvP playlist? Joking, of course. Thirdly, I think solidifying an event's gimmick is worth investigating. What I mean by that is, besides the general theme and activities of the event, all events have some unique trait to them. Solstice has high stat armor farming, and Festival of the Lost has exotic armor farming and initial acquisition. Dawning and Guardian games are a little less developed. For those in the know, the Dawning is one of the best and most casual friendly bright dust farms in the game. Just play the game normally, and when the last week comes, just pick up bounties, bake the listed cookies, and profit. So Bungie, this is my plea to not take that away, and maybe you should embrace it. Have dust come from different sources, increase amount, or maybe reward those that play harder activities, like expanding the weekly bounties to also include some to do full raids, dungeons, or nightfalls. For guarding games, it's up to you. The only thing not touched on by the other events are exotic weapons. Maybe you take a page out of Zer's book and make it a way to get weapon catalysts. These gimmicks should reward people that participate, but not let FOMO run wild. As an example, Solstice has the best high stat armor farm, but that isn't the only source of armor. Bit of heresy, episode helm vendors, and master raids are always there. My fourth bit of feedback is about loot. Since events are limited time activities, you want the loot to walk the fine line of desirable, not too strong, and drop frequently. Personally, I think events have mostly accomplished this. The weapons usually have perk pools that are interesting, but there are other weapons in the game you could get to accomplish similar goals. 
like with Solstice. The Something New Hand Cannon has great PvE and PvP perks, but there are other stasis or meta hand cannons you could get. The problem with the loot is their acquisition method, or I should say the consistency of their methods. Depending on the activity, you could just have RNG drops, weapon focusing with a specific currency, or double perk drops. What I like is a unified approach, as some methods make it hard to get the loot you are after. Take Guardian Games. The recent version didn't have specific weapon focusing, and only had double perk weapons as quest rewards. The events prior to that, the Dawning, had specific weapon focusing, and they could drop with double perks. Because these events are limited, and players have different things they are chasing, more agency over the loot would be nice. Weapon focusing shouldn't be the only avenue, as getting RNG drops from activities give you those moments of excitement while playing the game, instead of spending your time at a vendor. Maybe look at the attunement system we saw return with the brave arsenal weapons. RNG is still involved and you get the other weapons in the loot pool, but it gives you control over what you want most. Plus, it would solve people's gripes with the newest weapon always being the favored drop. I understand why this is the case, you want people to play with the new toys, but when you always refresh the other weapons perk pools, players will naturally want to get those as well. In short, allow for player agency over specific loot, either through an attunement or focusing-esque system, and keep double perks as a farming feature. My last section of feedback comes down to avenues of participation. This refers to incentives to participate in the event and ways players can do so without limiting how they play. What Bungie did with Solstice this year is great. You aren't forced to play Bonfire Bash for loot, Forge Bounties provide a variety of activities and playstyles, and the event challenges now match all other seasonal events. 100% optional unless you want the title or the few unique rewards. Only Festival of the Lost is missing this feature, so add a way to get those weapons or eerie ingrams outside of Haunted Lost sectors. To get players to play the event longer or to actually give it a fair shake, reward them good loot. We've seen that over the years like the curated role of Macabre with Snapshot Opening Shot. While they don't have to be god rolls, which then kills the reason to play, maybe give good enough options to get them started and interested to see what else they can get. A good example from recent history was from Into the Light and the PvP map pack. By participating in completing Shax's quest, you got the choice between curated rolls of the three competitive weapons. Maybe do that for events. Two or three versions of the newest weapon, like one for PvE, one for PvP, or maybe an option for each of the available weapons gives player a taste of what powers they hold. Of course, there are other things I'd wish for that I know many others would too, like a couple of the good Eververse cosmetics to be part of the event challenges, or the ability to earn enough Bright Dust for one event set. But those aren't the big issues. The priority should be on the uniqueness the event offers in their gameplay and loot. There has been a lot of good iteration in the past couple of years, there just still needs to be a bit more to provide a more cohesive experience. On screen is a summary of my thoughts and feedback, but the main points I'd like addressed are a unique loot gimmick for each event, slight tweaks to the gameplay loop year over year, and a weapon drop framework that is similar to each event. In this, I hope I wasn't too demanding or armchair developery. My main goal was to try to distill the problem areas myself and the community see, highlight what seems to work and what doesn't, and give an idea of changes that are something we've already seen in game that is hopefully easy and sustainable to accomplish. If nothing changes, I'd still be happy with these events, as they offer great loot and different activities that spice up the lulls of the year. But I know others would like to see changes and have these events brought up to modern standards. If you agree or disagree with my thoughts, or have ideas of your own, comment down below. I'm always down for a good discussion. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, consider subscribing if you haven't already, Share this video and feedback with your friends or Bungie, and maybe visit the Sundog Gaming Discord if you want to meet some new friends and learn some raids and dungeons. As always, I am your Commander Pika. Be kind, have fun, and I'll see you on the battlefield.